Hey guys, so in this video I wanted to go over my custom user interface, the changes that I made to ZBrush's standard user interface, and which tools that I use most frequently and why I place them where I did. And I'm also going to go over how to change your own user interface and store that so that every time you load up ZBrush, it loads the, the way that you want. So when I first load up ZBrush here, uh, you actually can't see all of my user interface. And I think that's because it's not in edit mode. It's only in draw mode. So if I load up uh, the Dynamesh Sphere, the rest of the UI will come in. And you can see here um, uh, how I have this set up. And I think that if I go, you, ZBrush has a bunch of presets for their user interface layouts. And if I load this next one, I think this is the standard that um, comes, but I'll just go through these. So this, this can give you some, some good ideas about how uh, you'd like to set yours up. Um, I would never say, you know, set, my, set yours up exactly like I do. Um, and I recommend actually using ZBrush in the standard uh, layout and get a feel for which tools within ZBrush you use the most and then go about creating your UI. And it's really easy to change your UI up. So um, it's something that I'm constantly uh, iterating on. You should probably should change your UI up uh, every time uh, a new version of ZBrush comes out uh, because there'll be new tools and you know new functions. So if I want to restore, I just go into config and then I say restore custom UI. So this is how I have it set up. All right, so let's go over um, what's different in my UI than the original. Actually, it's been so long, I'm going to have to keep switching back and forth because I don't even remember. Um, I know that all of these additional buttons down here are extra and these buttons are mostly found on this left side here. I'm right-handed and the reason I have the layout the way it is is when I'm sculpting on the tablet my hand is usually closer to the uh, left side of the tablet and so I'll be sculpting so if this screen with the tablet I, my hand will be mostly on this side and so I put the most important uh, buttons um, you know to the left and to the bottom uh, and then that leaves this whole area for me to sculpt. And that way I don't have to keep moving my hand back and forth all the way to the right hand side. I guess you could take all of these menus and drag them over to this side. But I think that crowds your sculpting surface a little too much. So I prefer to have it over there. All right, let's Preferences, config, restore custom UI. Oh, and I like to always have my ZBrush plugins over, over here as well. So the main difference is uh, uh, up at the top, I have enable middle, middle button scrolling here. And this is a plugin I actually just went over in another video not long ago. I'll have that uh, linked at the top if you want to watch that. Um, uh, my active and total points. My focal shift and draw size, I believe these are the same. Let me go to the next. Yeah, so you can see that most of this is the same up here. I think that I got rid of some of these. Preferences, config, restore custom UI. I got rid of some of these and um, I added in this Tiny Sculptures Pro mode. Um, these are custom uh, camera angles. So if uh, this, this is really useful, you click this custom button and then that sets that angle. So then I can, it'll always snap to that viewing angle and it gives you two of them. So if I click on custom two, so then one, two, one, two. Um, move scale, rotate, and my gizmo tool, and then edit and draw. That's everything that um, I have, and then the light box, which is, I always leave right up here. So if I go back to the other one, yeah, it looks like I got rid of projection master and quick sketch. I don't use that very much and home page, um, live Boolean. I actually, I, f I actually do use live Boolean a lot and I actually might put that in there. I actually have a space 
um, right there, um, up at the top, preferences, config, restore custom UI. Yeah, I could put live boolean right here. Actually, I have some other space over here too that I could use. Um, and then over on the side, the main difference is all, all of this is the same. My brush, my stroke, my alphas, the textures, my material, um, my, uh, my color picker, and my two colors, my switch color. Um, and this, I think, is something I added, fill object. Yeah, fill object is not there, which is really handy if you just want to get a color on something really quickly. And I think fill object is in under color. So normally you would go into this menu and say fill object. And then if you switch color again, you'd have to say fill object again. Uh, but otherwise, every time you change this color picker, it automatically changes what's on here. Um, and then underneath here, another very useful thing that I do a lot is I switch my light source. Mm. Easier to see if I switch to a blend. So, yeah, I switch the direction in which the light is coming. And this can really, really be helpful, especially when you're sculpting detail. Well, I'm, any, any primary or secondary forms as well. So you can really see if you've got a piece of reference of a face or, or whatever, and it's heavily in shadow, uh, you can try to match that light with this tool here, and um, it'll be a little bit easier when you're sculpting to try to match that reference. Um, and then under here are, again, very useful for me. Uh, I just have six mat caps here that I I use the most common. Uh, <laughs> mat cap Red Wax, I don't really use this one. I, this one's kind of here is a little bit of a joke. But uh, this dirty blue I use a lot, which is just like a pleasing color to the eye to me. Oops, let me turn it off a of red. Switch, or fill object. What do I do? Fill object. This is what it looks like. And um, I think that it, it lets you see a lot of the detail and faceting when you're sculpting. I think it's just a good material to sculpt. I, blue's probably my favorite color. Um, and then skin shade is good. Um, it's a good approximation. It doesn't really do subsurface scattering or anything, but it's a good approximation if you're going to be taking a character into another program and rendering it out. Uh, Blin is another one that's nice for detail. If you have color on your model and you're not just doing straight sculpting, then you probably don't want to be using the blue. And so Blin, I have. Um, obviously, it, it ups the specular highlights way, way high and, and the contrast, but it, it's useful for sculpting. Uh, Framer is... I, I don't use too much, but it, if I'm doing, like, fine, fine detail on, on cloth or skin, uh, this lets me see very clearly areas that I have not worked or overworked because of the way that it does the like edge highlighting here. And then flat color is really useful for just checking on your, your plain texture map. Um, you know, if you were, uh, sometimes with skin shade or blend, what, you, what colors you actually have on your skin or whatever object you're painting kind of become obscured and it can be really helpful to be switching back and forth from uh, skin, uh, flat color to skin. All right. Well, uh, flat color, skin, uh, blend, and framer. These are probably the most useful ones that I'm using the, uh, in my actual uh, workflow. All right. Then at the bottom here, these are just the brushes I use the most. They actually are a little bit cut off here. I need to fix those a little bit. Um, and then I have my extract tools here, um, my decimation tools here, um, divide, and then merge, and then I have delete lower and delete higher. Uh, my sub, this, is, this is like my subdivision section here, and my merge subtools section here. Dynamesh and Zremesher are kind of together, and then, so Dynamesh, and then Dynamesh resolution here, Zremesher, and then target poly count here. 
sometimes I need to go into these menus. But this is usually sufficient for, you know, the, the way I use them. Um, but sometimes I want to change, like, adaptive strength on zero mesher, Or change, like, whether I want to keep my polygroups or whatever. Um, mask by polygroups I use a lot. Backface masking, very, very useful button to have. And then here are my lazy mouse uh, tools here. Or at least the sliders that I use the most with lazy mouse. Uh, mirror and weld, super, super useful tool, especially if you're working symmetrically and, uh, you know, your model, you forget to turn your symmetry back on or whatever. Um, sometimes just while you're sculpting, for whatever reason, the model becomes asymmetrical. So that can be super helpful. Close holes, uh, delete hidden, uh, split hidden, group split, and split mass points. These are all just kind of like my fixing, fixing topology tools here. Um, smart resim goes kind of hand in hand with mirror and weld. Same with mirror, because mirror and weld only goes one way. Uh, so uh, if if the sides are asymmetrical and I say mirror and weld, it's always going to go left to right. But if I wanted this side over here, then I would have to hit mirror and then mirror and weld. So then I would have this side uh, mirrored over both sides. And then smart resim is great if um, you don't want your topology to change. If you have, for example, if you have clean topology on an object, but you messed up your symmetry and you already have UVs and you don't want to have to go through all that trouble of retopologizing again, smart resim is great. I think these, yeah, this is symmetrical here. So smart resim. And this also can work in conjunction with mirror. Um, and I'll just quickly turn this on. I should probably do a separate video all about uh, mirror and weld, smart resim and mirror. Um, but if you look here, there's there's a center line here. And if I do mirror and weld, you see how I get, it changes the topology versus smart resim, keeps that same topology and then just tries to match the vertex positions from one side to the other. All right. Uh, import and export, uh, oh, it highlights them both, that's cool, um, it's just in this tool palette here. Um, and this actually, I in the most recent version of ZBrush, this used to be a plugin here, uh, FBX import export, and I used to have these two buttons here, uh, but then I, because with the latest version of ZBrush, you can import whatever and export uh, whatever file type. It used to only be OBJs for this import and export button here in the tool and you used to do that separate one for FBX but now I believe you can do anything uh, STL, OBJ, FBX, uh, whatever. Um, let's see, smart reset mirror, weld points and auto groups. Alright so that's pretty much it, the run, the full rundown of uh, my custom UI, it's nothing too crazy. These are just like, I just kind of grouped together buttons that I thought went, worked well together and buttons that I use most often. And it's still, you know, it's always a work in progress. I'm still changing it all the time. Um, let me show you how to make your own custom UI now that I've gone over mine. Um, so it's under preferences, configuration. You might think it was under custom UI, but it is not. Config. Uh, let me just make sure. I don't think I changed anything, but yeah. Configuration, enable, customize. And you'll enter that in this customize mode. And then what you want to do is hold down Control Shift, or no, it's Control Alt. I stand corrected. And then you can start moving whatever buttons you want around. Customize one, two, so yeah, very easy. So you can take whatever you want from these menus, be it on the, the left, right, or uh, up here, and just hold down Control and Alt, and then you can drag them to wherever you want on the UI. Yeah, I don't know why. Sometimes it can be a little fidgety, and I'm not sure why. I'm actually gonna move all these over. because I, my OCD is crying out because these are clipping slightly. 
Um, one way you can actually fix this is you can change your button size. Um, and I should have looked up exactly where this is. Um, I probably under preferences, interface, let's see. Yeah, button size. Yeah, I have the mine are set to 42. I believe they're a little bit larger in the standard. And if you feel like you're running out of space with uh, how you're setting up your UI and you want to fit more in there and you don't mind having smaller buttons, you just adjust the size and then when you restart ZBrush, it will show up with those uh, smaller or larger buttons, however you have this set up. I actually probably want to take this down to 40. And that way, this will all fit better, a little bit cleaner here. All right, and then the other change that I wanted to make earlier was render, render booleans, and then I want to take control all live booleans and put this back here, because I do use this button quite a bit and I have the space. All right, so once you have your uh, UI the way you want it, you say go to preferences, config, turn off enable customize, and then you want to save the UI and then store config. So I'll just say master configuration has been saved successfully and will be restored every time you start ZBrush. Okay. And then you can save, I, I recommend saving the UI just in case. And that way you can, you know, if your computer dies or you have to reinstall ZBrush or whatever, you'll have that file and you can load it in. Um, with, you know, right here, load UI, and then you just navigate to that file and it'll restore this. You don't have to remember like, oh, what, which buttons I have where. All right. Um, I think that's everything that I wanted to go over. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions about how to, uh, and about anything that I went over in this video or how to set up your own custom UI or recommendations for how to do it yourself, there's plenty of forums available online. I should say, you can ask me in the comments, but Go look on forums because there's entire um, there's entire massive threads of people just posting their own custom UIs. And sometimes people have multiple custom UIs for different types of sculpting. Some people want like a super clean UI and they use only hotkeys. Some people want every single button available everywhere and it is totally up to you. Uh, so that is another important note. Leave me a like subscribe, share, all of that good stuff. It really helps me out. And until the next video, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.